Claude has recently released an entire prompt library with nearly 70 different prompts. These are very comprehensive, very practical, and you could use them right now inside of Claude 3, just copy and paste, or you could use them inside of ChatGPT or Gemini. Works pretty much the same across all large language models, and I've tested just about every single one of them, and I put together a list of my top 10 favorites, and then you could obviously look into the library and see what you come up with. But let me show you the 10 that I found extremely useful inside of Claude here. Now, this prompt library has two different categories, and this is the official one. This is on their website. So there are play prompts. These are kind of fun things like dream interpreter or creating games here using HTML files. But I wanted to show you these work prompts for the majority of this video, at least my top 10 favorite mainly come from the work prompts. And I tested every single one of these. And they also have this tab for user generated prompts where you could submit your own form, but I don't see anything available here. So let's go through the list of the top 10. Again, there is about 65, close to 70 different prompts here that you could explore on your own after this video. Now for the first one, I picked this one, Corporate Clairvoyant, because data analysis or extracting insights from any document is pretty much the most useful parts of using these type of large language models. So this one will extract insights, risks, or identify risk, any information from a long document or a corporate report into a single memo. And obviously it doesn't have to be a corporate report, any kind of report, it will kind of do the same thing. But here is what you need to do. So your task is to analyze the following report and you could copy and paste the report. So I'll show you this inside of Claw 3 so you kind of see it in real time, but they do show an example output underneath. And I'm gonna use the paid version here, but the free version for the most part when I tested it did give me good results with these prompts. This one gave me a little better results, especially when it came to any type of coding, even HTML. This Opus model did give me better results and I have the upgrade model here. And this is the report and it's very, very long. So I'll just kind of scroll through. You can see I'm not even a third of the way there. So I'm just gonna select this entire page I'll go back to Claude here and I'll go ahead and paste it. So your task is to analyze the following report. I pasted all the text here, 3,374 lines of text. Then I'll go ahead and copy the rest of the prompt here. You could obviously attach the file too if you have it downloaded. That was just specifically on a website. So I just copy pasted the text and it pasted it like this. Okay, it took about 30 seconds here to analyze it. And it gave me the summary here in bullet point format. It gave me the key trends and takeaways that I asked for. And it looks like he's still doing the summary over here. And what I like to do sometimes with these, especially if I'm going to really use this for business purposes, I like to run the same prompt through ChatGPT with GPT-4 to make sure I get the same numbers or just look over and search my document for the specific numbers to make sure there is no type of hallucinations. Obviously, with this kind of report, any type of PNL type of report, balance sheet report, you have to get these numbers right. So I like to just test this out with a couple of different large language models. Right now I'm between Claude 3 Opus and GPT-4 when I need very accurate information. And then I do a third check, just very quickly checking some of these numbers if I'm gonna send this out in a single page memo. Now the next one I picked is called Website Wizard. And this one really blew my mind. Basically it creates a one page website based on whatever your prompt says. And look at the prompt they're giving us, it's very detailed. Now these are more for creating on top of the API. So you'll see a system and user, but you could actually copy and paste both and copy and paste them into Claude or ChatGPT. And you should get pretty good results here with that. And I copied and pasted it here and I used the website here. This is called codepen.io. This is just a free website where you could type in HTML code, CSS code and JavaScript code and see what a website looks like. And this is just the embedded code that has the CSS and JavaScript into one. Look at this website here. It gave me a very nice heading over here. It created this section. These images I added myself because otherwise it just creates this. It doesn't know where to get images from. So you do have to go and copy the link to an image to add it or upload the image in your website uh, creation platform. So right there, it's a broken link. but. Really nice, it has a whole footer section, it has a whole top section over here. And you can see the JavaScript, look at this text right here, you see it's changing, that's from the JavaScript that he wrote for me, it has a little search bar. And this was literally, I don't know, 10 seconds for generating that code, copy and pasting it over here inside of CodePen, obviously I could do it inside of WordPress and build a real web website like this. 
And again, I like that the user prompt here is broken up into numbers. So you could go ahead and just kind of use this as a template and change any of these out. Now, this is getting better and better. Every time I create these one page websites or complete websites using just straight code without actually going into the code, the only time I went into the HTML code was changing the URL to that specific image instead of the placeholder. That's it. I didn't change anything else. I didn't do any type of improvement to the prompt. I copied and pasted exactly as it was. Now, next on my list, even though this Excel one is really useful, there's really good coding prompts here available. The site your sources I chose for number three, and this one basically answers questions about a specific document with citations. So that is very useful. And here is the prompt that you would want to copy and paste. In this case, I still want to go ahead and copy the text from this document. So I'll do it the same way as before. I'll start with this part of the prompt. I'll open that document over here and I'll copy and paste the entire document again. And I'll paste the rest of the prompt as well. And I'll press send. And again, the answer only took about 30 seconds. And look how practical and useful this is. It gave me very specific quotes from different parts of this over 3000 line documents. And I could just copy and paste it for, let's say I'm writing a blog or doing some kind of research or doing a report. Well, it would take me forever to find this manually through this document, right? This is a massive time saver here. One of my favorite ways to use these kind of large language models. And then my specific question was, how is this company doing? And he basically told me exactly how he's doing with, again, those little references here from pulling it from that document. And again, I checked it with the answer that was in that prompt list. But again, I recommend if you're doing anything like this to make sure you run it through another model at least in these early days of large language models to make sure there's no hallucination. Double checking doesn't, doesn't hurt. It takes a little bit more time, but I always like to be on the safe side with that. Now, number four on my list, another very practical one. This one is called Meeting Scribe, and this one will basically summarize and create kind of key takeaways and action items from any type of meeting notes that you have. So a lot of times, let's say I'm having a meeting inside of Zoom, I'll use the AI built into Zoom to give me the summary of that meeting. Then I could feed it with this kind of prompt as an attachment. So this is basically, here's the system prompt. Your task is to review the meeting notes and create a summary, capture the essential information and so on. So you would copy and paste this here. And then the meeting notes will be specifically about your meeting or something, another AI app inside of Zoom, for example, output it for you. So it's kind of working with two different AI apps here. If you don't have manual notes that someone took for you or you took yourself. And here's what I got in a few seconds. Key takeaway in six simple bullet points here. And I got the action items that I asked for again in bullet points and really easy to follow through. And that's it. That's really all I need. Let's say the meeting was an hour long and some people missed the meeting. How great is that to just send this to them as an email? And this is one of the reasons I love Claw 3. Just a format and the writing style you almost don't need to do any revision to rewrite this in a simpler tone in a non-promotional tone. Some of the things I have to do with ChatGPT, I don't have to do that here. I could literally, I think, copy and paste this from here. Just copy, send it via email. Okay, for number five and for the couple of prompts coming up here, I want to talk about writing because some of us use ChatGPT and Claude and other models to write a good amount. I use it the majority of time actually for writing kind of text or explaining things in a simpler way. Second great simplifier. This one is one of my favorites. Make complex text easier for younger learners. Now it doesn't have to be, this doesn't have to be for teachers and younger learners. It could just be simplifying text so it's easier to understand for anyone. The only thing you would change here, right here, this younger learner grade three to five, you could change this to anything for eighth grade reading level, for example. You could change it to that if you want. And here's the output that it gave me, so I won't run this through cloud. This is pretty straightforward. So this is pretty much the prompt you would use beforehand, and then your specific task would go over here. And make sure if you want to change anything, this is where I would change it. But some of the other things are good for just about any writing prompt, like plain language, present the information in a clear, engaging way, making it short here, simplify advanced vocabulary. So this part is really useful for just about any type of writing that you're going to do. Just change here the grade level here or the reading level if you want to level this up. You could even do college level, for example. Now, next on my list is also for writing, but this one is specifically for grammar. So I use Grammarly most of the time, and Grammarly has a really nice AI built into it. But this Grammar Genie prompt, very simple and very useful. 
Now, I recommend anytime you write anything, run it through this prompt. I usually use this inside of ChatGPT. It's one of my saved prompts. Your task is to take the text provided and rewrite it to be clear. Basically, it fixes grammar. It fixes spelling. It says correct spelling issues, punctuation issues, any verb tense issues, anything with word choice. The user input would be whatever you want fixed right after that. What I like about this is if you don't prompt it this way, it just rewrites some of your original text in a completely different way. So a lot of times when I write myself, I run it just through this prompt so it doesn't change the structure or the meaning or the tone of how I want to deliver something, especially when it comes to writing email. Sometimes this is the only prompt I might run the email that I personally wrote through just using this prompt and then I would send it after that. Now, number seven on my list is also for writing, but this takes it to the next level, adaptive editor. So this will rewrite text based on the instruction and it will change this right here, tone, audience or style or all three. So rewrite the following paragraph using the following instructions in a style of a pirate or for this audience or in a friendly but professional tone. So these are where you could go ahead and change this or all three. You could do a combination, maybe in a professional tone for a audience that are CEOs, for example, in a style of Steve Jobs, something like that. And then that would give you exactly the prompt that you need. This is one of my favorite ways to rewrite something based on these three different areas. And then the paragraph obviously would go over here. And then here is the output that it gave me in the pirate voice again. This is obviously not business related. The word pirate, you probably would never write something like this, but you get the idea. It could be in the style of anyone, any famous author, any famous speaker, or really the tone in the audience is where I usually use this type of prompt. Now, one last writing prompt before we get to a couple of business prompts, but prose publisher here is a great copywriting technique prompt. And look at the prompt, the system prompt here is pretty long. But as you could see, it has a really easy to use number list here. So you could remove any of these or refine them based on what you want to do here. This goes through the content, identifies any area of, of need. So anything related to grammar, punctuation, spelling, syntax. So all that is going to get changed. Remember the grammar prompt we had before really was focused on just this part. And then this is going to give you suggestions. Okay. This is really useful. It's also going to give you alternative choice options for words to make it more clear and to have bigger impact. Now it's going to check for flow. It's going to provide you feedback with the effectiveness of the writing. And then it's going to give you the edited version, but it's going to also give you this as a numbered list. So you would just copy the system prompt here and then your user, this section will just be the text again that you have or that you wrote fantastic one of the best prompts out there i'm going to start using this one i had a version of this for chat gpt but it wasn't quite as organized so this is going to be, become my favorite prompt when it comes to rewriting any kind of copy now next on the list here is a marketing prompt product naming pro a lot of us are in business we come up with a business idea we come up with a product idea within our business and i could never figure out how to come up with a good name so since ai came out it's really helped me come up with a bunch of different ideas and then manually narrow it down in my head to what I like and then refine it with more prompts. So this one creates a catchy product name. So your task is to generate creative, memorable and marketable names based on the provided descriptions. And it will be a two to four word prompt. Again, you could change this if you want, avoid anything generic here. So again, a really good prompt. And obviously with all these prompts, it doesn't hurt to build on it or customize it a little bit for your use case. And then you would give it right here a description. So this is for a noise canceling headphone. And this keyword section is also useful. So if you have any keywords, put it in there. So copy this whole section as usual and give it to Claude. And if I was going through this, I would just kind of glance through the names and Serenity Pro, that actually sounds really good. Maybe I'll start there and then I would follow up, say, hey, I like number three, give me 10 more that match number three and then kind of refine it from there till I come up with a name. And if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or marketer, brand builder, craft and design a brief for a holistic brand identity. And I love the details of this prompt. So it's going to help with naming, with logo, color palette, typography, any tone and the voice of the brand, overall brand personality, really detailed prompt here with what you need to do when you're coming up with kind of a holistic branding approach in the world of marketing or entrepreneurship. 
And obviously those are my personal picks, so I'll link this document below in the description of this video so you could go ahead and search all the prompts. And I'm sure they're going to add more to it, especially when this user submitted prompts start rolling out. And you could obviously try to submit your own prompt here if you think you have something that matches what they have going on here. And if you're not a member of Skill Leap AI, basically we have an e-learning platform where we roll out entire courses. So I create tutorials on YouTube videos. I put them there at free as well, but really this is 20 plus courses here that we've created myself and five other instructors here that are domain experts. And we roll out two new courses every single month. This is a simple subscription plan and you get access to everything. You don't have to buy $150 or sometimes these are $500 courses through other creators. Basically we give them all for one monthly price with a free trial. So you could enroll in a course completely free. We just roll out this new one, AI powered design for entrepreneurs. And we have custom GPTs for entrepreneurs. I'm working on a Claude course, Gemini course, and we have different courses on AI chatbots and things like that. So this one I will link below if you want to explore that, if you will really want to dive into these AI tools more than what I could provide on YouTube. Thanks so much for watching this video and I will see you on the next one.